Okay, so today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. Again, just like fractions, a common denominator, preferably the LCM of the denominators, is needed when adding and subtracting rational expressions. I don't need all that. To find the LCM of several expressions, you want to factor the expressions, numbers, or polynomials completely. The LCM then will be the product, yikes, it will be the product of the prime factors, each raised to the greatest power. So watch how we're going to do this. Um, our first example, A. So I have 2x plus 4. I need to factor that. That becomes 2 times x plus 4. Then I have x squared minus x minus 6. I'm sorry. I didn't factor that correctly. I don't have students in here telling me what I'm doing wrong. x plus 2. 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. And the next one factors to x minus 3, x plus 2. So I have two factors over here. I have two factors over there. Each of those is a prime factor because they cannot be factored further. So my LCM is going to be 2 times. You're going to write down each factor that you see. So I have a 2. I have an x plus 2. I have an x minus 3 and an x plus 2, but I already, have it, I already have that written, so I don't need to write it again. There are no exponents on anything, so that is my LCM, and you don't need to multiply it out. Okay, so look at b, x squared plus 3x minus 4. That factors to x, what, x plus 4, x minus 1. X, plus, x squared plus 2x minus 8 factors to x plus 4, x minus 2. And x squared minus 4x plus 4, that's our perfect square trinomial. So that's x minus 2 quantity squared. So my LCM, I'm going to write down each factor that I see. I have an x plus 4. I have an x minus 1, and I have an x minus 2. And then I have to go give the greatest power. So when I look, my x minus 2 has a power of 2, so it will have to have a power of 2 on it in my LCM. And that's your LCM. And we need to do that because that's what we're going to be able to, or what we need to be able to add and subtract our rational expressions. So... I have x plus 1 over x minus 1. I have negative 2 over x squared minus x. This can't be factored any further. This, on the other hand, remember two terms can be factored either with a GCF or the difference of two squares. These, this binomial has a common factor of x, so it becomes x times x minus 1. And if you notice, so my LCM is going to be x times x minus 1. So that means i got to multiply this one by x over x. Remember, this is that 1 that we've talked about. Because you have to multiply the fraction by 1, so you don't change the value of the fraction. So make sure that you do the same thing to the top and the bottom. And so when I multiply it, that gives me um, x times x plus 1 becomes x squared plus x, plus a negative 2 is minus 2, all over x times x minus 1. Because when we add fractions, we get a common denominator, we keep the same denominator, and then we combine the numerators. Okay? You look to see if you can simplify this, and we actually can. We can factor this top, and it becomes x 
plus 2 times x minus 1. So hopefully you notice that we have a common factor of x minus 1 on the top and the bottom. That leaves our final answer to be x plus 2 over x. And we have to list the restrictions on our variables. So of course we have x cannot be equal to 0 and x cannot be equal to positive 1. And we're good to go. So moving on to B, again, difference of two squares or a GCF. This is the difference of two squares. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. So this becomes x minus 2 times x plus 2. This, of course, is x plus 2. So what do I need on the bottom or need to make a match or have a common denominator? It's going to be that I multiply this by x minus 2 over x minus 2. So on the top, I have x plus x minus 2 all over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And how does that simplify? It's not going to factor at all 2x minus 2. There's a common 2, but that's x minus 1. Doesn't cancel with anything on the bottom. So, and again, you can multiply it out or you can leave it in factored form. It's just easier to multiply it out this time. So, uh, x cannot be equal to plus or minus 2. Okay, next example, that was adding. Now let's do some subtracting. Um, again, x minus 2 is a prime factor. We're going to factor this, and hopefully one of the things about factoring, you'll notice, see if that's not one of your factors, x minus 2. If x minus 2 is a factor, uh, x minus 1 is the other one. That gives me positive 2, minus 2x, and minus x gives me minus 3x. So we factored that correctly and that tells us that I need an x minus 1 on the bottom to have a common denominator. So notice on the top I have x minus 1 times x plus 3 which means I got to FOIL that. So I have x squared plus 3x minus x is plus 2x minus 1 times plus 3 is minus 3. And be careful here, when you have a subtraction, you have to distribute that subtraction to the whole numerator. So this becomes minus 6x plus 7. All over your denominator, x minus 1, x minus 2. So I'm going to simplify that top, and that's going to become x squared minus 4x plus 4 over x minus 1, x minus 2. And hopefully you recognize this is a perfect square trinomial. So this actually becomes x minus 2 quantity squared. So that means I have two of these on top and one on bottom. I get to cancel and simplify. So my final answer becomes x minus 2 over x minus 1. x cannot be equal to 1 or 2. So be careful and make sure that you remember. Okay, you have to go back at the beginning and look at any kind of restrictions you have, not just your final answer. So because x couldn't be 2 up here, then that semi-final answer, even though you don't see it on the bottom anymore. Okay, looking at B, again, we're going to factor. Uh, let's hope an x plus 5 and x plus 1, I believe, works out. That gives us x squared plus 6x plus 5. So I need to multiply this one by x plus 1 over x plus 1. Always doing the same thing to the top and the bottom. So that gives me x plus 1 times x minus 1 is x squared minus 1. That's a plus b times a minus b. 
Remember to distribute your negative, so that makes it minus x minus 3 over x plus 1 times x plus 5. Okay, again, let's simplify our top. So when we simplify the top, we end up with x squared minus x minus 4 all over x plus 1 x plus 5. Uh, does this factor, there are no factors of 4 that have a difference of um, 1, so this won't factor. We just need to list our restrictions, which are sorry, my computer was doing funny things to me there. Uh, my restrictions are x cannot be equal to negative 1 or negative 5. Okay, the last thing that we have to talk about in this lesson is what we call a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a rational expression that has at least one fraction in the numerator or denominator or both. And there are two methods to so simplifying these complex, ex complex fractions. The first one is to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the LCD of all the rational expressions. The second method would be to combine combine the fractions in the numerator and denominator. Then you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which again, this is just the mathematical way of saying what a lot of people refer to as keep change flip. So let's look at both of these. I'm going to do an example of each one. x over 1 over x plus 1 over y. Um, the denominator, what's the denominator of this one? It's x over 1, so that's 1. The denominator here is x. The denominator here is y. So my LCD is going to be xy. And xy times x is going to give me x squared y. And on the bottom, xy times x, the x cancels, leaving me with just y. And then the y cancels with that, leaving me with just x. So you're left with this expression can't be simplified any further. X can be equal to, or excuse me, not equal to zero. Y cannot be equal to zero. And you have to remember that Y plus X can't be zero. So that ends up saying X cannot be negative Y. The nice thing about this method is it kind of gets rid of those fractions in one fell swoop. However, when they get a little bit more complicated, sometimes that's not the better method to use. So I want to look at both of them, in which case we have to combine these. So my LCM on the top is going to be x, the x times x plus 1. So this one has to be multiplied by x over x. This one is going to be multiplied by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that gives me... I have to FOIL those two, so I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus x is minus x minus 2, and then 2 times x is going to be plus 2x. That is my numerator. Okay, now if I go to the denominator, my LCM is going to be x minus 1 times x plus 1. So this one is going to get multiplied by x plus, excuse me, not x plus. This one's going to be multiplied by x minus 1 over x minus 1. This one is multiplied by x plus 1 over x plus 1. Each time I'm writing the same thing on the top and the bottom because we're multiplying each term by the number 1 in essence. 
Okay, so that was my numerator. Now I'm going to go write my denominator. 3 times x plus 1 is 3x plus 3. Uh, 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1, but I have to distribute my negative, so that gives me minus x plus 1 all over x minus 1 times x plus 1. So what I do, if I simplify this here, that gives me x squared uh, plus x minus 2. And if I simplify this one, I'm left with 2x plus 4. Now, the reason I did that is because when I do my keep change flip, I'm going to keep this one, but this is my numerator, and I'm going to factor it because it factors 2 x plus 2 times x minus 1 over the quantity of x times x minus 1. And then I'm changing my operation from division to multiplication. And now I'm going to flip my denominator. So x minus 1, x plus 1 comes on top. And I'm going to factor this on the bottom to 2 times x plus 2. Now look what we have. We have an x plus 2 on the top and the bottom. We have an x minus 1 on the top and the bottom. Doesn't matter if it's directly or in a diagonal as long as you have, when you're multiplying, as long as you have one on the top and one on the bottom. So what does that leave me with? Oh, I just found a mistake. That says x plus 1. This is supposed to be x plus 1. Let me go back a second. Okay, this is supposed to be x plus 1. x times x plus 1. So that should be a plus, and that should be a plus. Which means when I'm canceling, this cancels with that guy. It doesn't cancel with this because it's not x minus 1. So that leaves me on the top with x minus 1 quantity squared over 2x. And my restrictions, look back on all our denominators. x cannot be 0. That's what I have right here. And then any denominator that I've had, so I can't have negative 1. That's 0 and negative 1. This is 1 and negative 1, so let's put plus or minus 1. And then I have a denominator here so I can't have negative 2 either. So we're looking back at all of our denominators to figure out what we can't have. And that sums up adding and subtracting rational expressions.